Now there are two primary types of sequences we deal with in Algebra 1. One is the arithmetic sequence. And what makes a sequence arithmetic is that the difference between any two successive terms is constant. And we call that difference a common difference. All right? So here's an example of something that is arithmetic. 80, 89, 98, and 107. Because if I take the difference in those two terms, I get a positive 9. So therefore, this looks like it's going to be an arithmetic sequence. Now, we used to call these things linear in Algebra 1. So basically, remember, an arithmetic sequence kind of relates back to the linear. It has that constant first addition. And this 9, we called it a first difference in Algebra 1. Well, now we're going to call it a common difference because it is the difference that is common between every single term. And it's super easy to write apparent formulas for arithmetic sequences, primarily because it's super easy to write linear equations at this point. And remember, the difference is that this first term is where n equals 1. And so if I want to write the a sub n or the general term, I can just go ahead and start with that 80 and plug that in there. And I know that I'm going to add 9 over and over again. So it's going to be 9 times something. And it can't just be n. Because if it were n, then when I plug in a 1, I get an 89. It shifts it over to this term. So in order to get the index right, if I subtract off a 1, then I'm going to get the rule that's going to work. Because if I think about it, that first term doesn't have the 9 added to it. So I don't want to include that 9. So I have to say n minus 1. And it turns out that every single arithmetic sequence has a general term that can be written in this form. That 80 was the first term. That 9 was the common difference. And if I want to generalize, then I can say that a sub 1 is my first term. d is my common difference. And the nth term, or the general term, is denoted a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So arithmetic sequences weren't that new. And so what about arithmetic means? Well, they're not new either. Because when you were in fifth or sixth grade and your teacher taught you mean, median, and mode, the mean they taught you was actually an arithmetic mean. Now in Algebra 2, the definition changes a little bit. The only difference is, is that you can actually have more than one arithmetic mean. All arithmetic means are, it's, they're just defined as the terms between given terms of an arithmetic sequence. So I'm telling you, 5 and 7 are terms in a sequence, and there are things in between there. Well, those numbers in between there are arithmetic means. And if I just ask for one arithmetic mean, then that's the old school mean from mean, median, and mode. But I can have you insert 2, 3, 4, 5, 20 arithmetic means. And all that means is that you have more terms in between. And so if I say insert 3 arithmetic means, this is what I mean. Okay, You have a 5 and a 7, and inside, in between the 5 and the 17, you have 3 terms. So there is some common difference that when you add it to 5 and then add again, add again, add again, you're going to get 17, and that kind of tells you how you figure out the answer. What's the difference between 5 and 17? Well, this is a jump of 12 units that need to be broken up into four pieces. So that gives you that this d is equal to 3. So you get 8, 11, and then 14. And you've generated an arithmetic sequence that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, where 5 and 17 were the outer terms. And that's how you figure out arithmetic means. Now, when I say I want the arithmetic mean, that means I want one arithmetic mean, which means I want to know what's in the middle of 5 and 17. And this is just old school average, you know, where you add the two numbers, you divide by 2, and you get 11. 